Uh, man, it's, uh, it's good to be back um, here at the, the Big Ten Media Days. It's good to see familiar faces. Um, and, man, what a, what a difference a, a year makes. Um, you know, a, lot, a lot has changed in, in, throughout the course of this past year. Um, you know, our, our building looks different. You know, we've made, we've made upgrades aesthetically to the weight room. Um, we've got a, a dining hall that will be a lot more convenient for, for our student athletes. That's uh, right outside the, the building right there attached to the stadium. Uh, we've got new uniforms um, that, uh, you know, represents a, a, a new uh, era in, in Purdue uh, football uh, that hopefully pays homage to some things of the past and, and gives a, a modern look um, on the future. Um, we also got 37 uh, new players added to the, uh, to the roster. Um, 20, 27 of those were enrolled in January, which I thought was uh, very important um, and strategic on the, on the staff's uh, standpoint. Uh, to get them inundated with the, the culture, with the camaraderie of the locker room and getting to know each other. Um, and hopefully that'll, that'll pay dividends this fall. Um, we've also learned a lot as a, as a program in a year. Uh, we've, we've learned our, our strengths and weaknesses as a staff, um, learned our strengths and, and weaknesses on, as a roster and, and tried to address those. Uh, we also um, know now what the, the standards and expectations are on how we operate on a day-to-day -day basis. I um, also learned as a program how we respond to adversity. Um, you know, when we hit adverse moments a year ago, uh, nobody blinked. Uh, they just put their head down, uh, dove into the process, um, and, and worked hard. Um, I've also learned a great deal as individually uh, going through my first year as a, a uh, head coach. Um, I understand now how to better serve the team in, in, the, in the use of my time. Um, obviously, um, my expertise is on the defensive side of the ball, and as a head coach, you wear a lot of hats. Um, but going through last season, uh, knowing how much I can dive into the X's and O's and how much I need to, to be head coach, um, that, that balance is, is something that I've learned. I've learned uh, how much I love this university and, and the West Lafayette community. Um, this, this is a, a fan base and a support system that is, that is unmatched. We've got great leadership and um, our president and our athletic director. Um, and and this, this, uh, this community, West Lafayette, they, they show up and they show out um, unconditionally. And what that looks like is, you know, having the, the highest uh, season ticket sales uh, since 2007 up to this point already. Um, I've also learned that everyone in the building has a, a chip on their shoulder that grows by the day. Um, and because of that, I can't wait for this fall. Um, so with that, I'll open the floor up for questions. On your right, Coach. Kyle Smedley with the Indy Star. I just wanted to ask about expansion. Um, first, just your thoughts on the four new teams, and then also with it being announced that Indianapolis is going to be the site of the Big Ten championship for through 2028, about the Big Ten's commitment to stay in Indiana for the foreseeable future as well. Yeah, I think the the, exp the to answer your first question, um, you know, anytime you add four teams like an Oregon, a USC, a UCLA, and a Washington um, to, the, to the Big Ten Conference. It's just, it's just going to add to the prestige, um, you know, add to the strength of, of the Big Ten Conference. Uh, those are, are great storied programs uh, with great coaching staffs and great players. Um, and I'm looking forward to competing against them year in and year out. Um, as far as the, the playing the, the Big Ten Championship game, uh, staying here in Indy, um, I just think it adds to the, the tradition of, of the Big Ten Conference. And um, obviously, I'm, I'm a little biased, uh, but this is a great venue and a, a great location for a championship game. Coach Lynn Harrington, State Line Power 5, how you doing today? Pretty good. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. So as you know, the Big Ten preseason media poll was released the other day and has the Boilermakers dead last. How are you going to use that as fuel for motivation for the team? Post it up in the locker room. I mean, what do you plan on using that as this fall? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, as much as you try not to, you know, read things and, and opinions of, of your program or, or, or yourself or your players, um, you, still, you still hear it, right? You know, if, if, if you're not reading it, you're – your folks are, or your friends are, or it gets back to you. Um, so I'd, I'd be naive not to address it with the team and, and not talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, but I, I did mention, you know, the, a, a large chip on everybody's shoulder in that building. Um, and 18 out of 18 is, is a large reason why. 
Dustin Schutte, Sports Illustrated. A two-part question for you, Ryan. You talked a lot about the things that you learned in your first season. What was the biggest lesson that you learned in that first year? And then I've given you a year since I asked this question last year. Have you got to Triple X and tried the peanut butter burger yet? Um, you, you know, the, the, as far as lessons I've learned in that, that first season, you know, I'd, I'd be up here all day talking about them, right? Um, you know, there are things that, that you anticipate and that you plan for, um, but nothing can prepare you uh, for real-time problems that occur and, and how fast and how urgently you need to come up with solutions. Um, and as far as the triple X, I have been there. I have not done the peanut butter burger yet. It's just I can't – the just doesn't add up in my mind on how that, how that works together. Uh, but I have been there for, for breakfast on a couple occasions, and they do a great job. Spencer McLaughlin, Locked On Podcast Network. Hudson Card last year, just under 59% completion for your offense. Is that a number that, that you're comfortable with as the head coach? And if you want it to go higher, how do you accomplish that this season? Yeah, I mean, obviously we want that number to, to be higher um, and fully anticipate that it will be. You know, if you look at Hudson Hudson's career um, and, and where where he's headed, you know, last season was his first time being a full-time starter at the collegiate level at quarterback. Um, and you couple that with, with being in a brand new system for the first time um, with a brand new environment and all those, the things that go into it, um, you know, year two, you, you genuinely or generally see a, a big jump um, from an experience standpoint. And so we've seen that in, in terms of um, his command of the offense and what we're trying to get accomplished there schematically. Um, you've seen him embrace his role as a, a leader um, on the team, um, and we've added some some pieces around him to to protect him and to and to throw and guys to throw the ball to. Uh, so I fully anticipate you know him having a big jump from year one to year two in the program. Good morning, Coach Kenneth Barry. Touchdowns and tangents. Um, obviously, Purdue, Purdue in the last couple of years has had somewhat of explosive offense. They've sent guys to the league. So when you think about that standard from what past players have done, how are you kind of incorporating that into what you want to see from your offense? But also you said you're a defensive-minded head coach. How do you kind of shift that perspective within the program? Yeah, I'm, you know, I am like the head coach though, right? So like I, I understand that the quarterback position is the most important position in sports period, right? Um, so on, on offense, we try to protect that guy and, and um, allow him to have success. Um, and then defensively, we try to disrupt him, right? Um, um, but, you know, as far as having explosive offenses, you know, I think we have the makings of that at Purdue. You know, we, we did send a, a running back to the NFL um, in a draft this past, this past season. Um, you know, we've got – we had back to uh, – you know, two uh, rush – two guys that had over 500 yards rushing, which hadn't been done at, at Purdue in a long time. Um, you know, in Big Ten conference games, you know, we're an air raid offense that led Big Ten conference games in rushing. Um, and so I just think that speaks to our staff's creativity and, and, and the compromise that you sort of have with, you know, identifying and, and adhering to your philosophy, but also uh, meeting the, the roster in the middle and, and trying to do things that uh, sets them up for success. Um, and so, again, I'm, I'm excited about where we're at, where we're headed, and, and I can't wait for this fall. Hey, Coach, Kyle with Sports Report Media. Um, talk about the big run that Purdue had, Coach Painter and the fans, and how that carries over to you with all the enthusiasm that Coach Painter and his team brought. And now here we are, football season ready for you. Yeah, you know, it was, it was awesome to see in real time. I think it gives a, a tangible example of, of what is attainable and what is possible uh, at Purdue uh, from an athletic standpoint. You know, we got to see firsthand – uh, the run that they made and, and the, the type of, of um, production and, and success they have year in and year out. Um, so I think for our players and for our staff and for our community, it, it, it shows you what is possible uh, from an athletic standpoint at, in West Lafayette at Purdue uh, University. Coach, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thanks.